Well, welcome back to the next part of our 1803cc engine build. As you can see, the block has gone from a horrible mess to a nice shiny blue. So, a quick bit of work on the old 1803cc, ready to put it back together. So, as you know, the previous ones, the auxiliary shaft bearings were shot. So, we've put new ones, those in there, one on the front, and again, one down the back in there. They can be quite awkward to put in. Um, again, I use sort of a reverse of the method of removing them, just knocking them in gently. Um, all you've got to make sure is the oil holes. So the oil hole there is lined up with the oil hole in the block. So if you put one of the shells in the wrong way around, it blocks your hole up. Guess what? You're going to have oil pressure problems. So we've got those tapped in. So now all we're going to do, put the shaft back in there. We've got the crank shells in there. The top ones are, I'll see, the 360 part of them with the big grooves in the middle. So you can put auxiliary shaft in, put the oil squirters back in, put the crank in, put the caps on, um, get some nuts back on there. And then all you're gonna do is just nip the nuts up, make sure the crank still spins nice and easily. If it does, happy days and we can torque them down. Don't forget your thrust washers if you're changing these. Um, all I'm, I'm using KS bearings. Um, so we've got a new thrust washers there the thrust washers literally stop crank walk so you've got the time belt engine at the end and you've got the gearbox so imagine the gearbox you've got a rod going through there and a clutch so you're pushing that rod pushing on the clutch guess what it's going to put force against the crank so it needs those in there to support the thrust of either side of it so i'll get the camera set up and then we'll get those chucked in So like I said, we've got the crank in. It moves nice now, so all we're gonna do is just give it a little, little nip, just to get everything seated. Once we know everything's seated and tight, all we can do, give the crank a rotate, you can feel that's perfectly smooth, so I don't need to worry about that. So like I said, we've got the crank in, we've nipped those up to make sure all the shells and everything is seated, crank still rotates, doesn't lock up anywhere. So now we can torque them up. Uh, these are torqued up to 60 newton meters. Um, they are not stretch bolts, so you can reuse them. A stretch bolt is anything where it has like, um, torque to 60 newton meters plus 90 degrees, etc. So anything that's got plus a degrees that means you're doing the bolt tight and you're pushing it that little bit more stretching the bolt um yeah so these bolts can be used you can upgrade them but there's no need to, to be honest so we'll talk those up and then uh that's it for that and we can get the seals cleaned and done simple procedure again if you're going to do your torque wrenches don't do this tight this tight and this tight because if there's any imbalances you could put excess strain on something else so talk these two up then go to those, 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 and finally the middle ones.
There we go. All talked up, then everyone will do again. Turn the crank, you shouldn't have, you should have a nice even resistance all the way around. I'm not using any effort for that. Again, we've used loads of energy. Engine assembly lubricant, just using the Lucas oil, it's good stuff. Get it all over there. Um, just to prevent any uh, dry turning when it starts up. Right, so all our crank is bolted in. Um, our oil squirter bolts are on. We've replaced those bolts because um, a couple of them got a bit damaged when taking them out and I don't want to put them back in and then round them off. So, front oil seal, casing's cleaned up, a new seal. Same as the back, another seal on the back. And now what we want to do is get the crank pulley on. Now, obviously it's got a lug inside there to line up with there. So just plop it on. Put it on tight and you should have a tiny bit of movement next to nothing. If you've got loads of slop, you need to be getting the wooden leaves. Now, so once that's on there, nice and tight, you want to fit our new bolt. Always put a new bolt in it. Um, this is the type you fit with them normally. Now, these should be fitted oiled. Now, the reason these are fitted oiled is they're torqued up to 200 newton meters, which is pretty tight for a bolt. Now, if you put this on dry, this surface here, makes with that surface when you're trying to torque it up and it's tight if they haven't got any lubrication between the faces that builds up friction friction causes heat and it will cause the torque wrench to click thinking it's at 200 newton meters when it could be quite far off so oil in it is pretty much fresh oil plop the bolt in there Bit of oil in there, bit of a shake, whop that in there, nice and tight and then we're going to torque that up to 200 meters and I'll show you how to lock the crank the easy way without damaging stuff. So get yourself a hammer, this is obviously a poly hammer, wooden hammer's fine, so what you want to do is lock the crank in the rotation you're going to tighten, so we're going to tighten that that way so the crank's going to turn that way. So get your hammer Sit it down just between the block. The crank's going to rotate against it and lock. That hammer is going to cause no damage whatsoever to any of the crank. And if something breaks, it's going to be the hammer, not anything else. You can get locking tools, but what's the point in paying that locking tool when you've got a good job there? So all we do is get a torque wrench on. Already wound up to 200 newton meters. We'll just turn it to wait for it to click. As you can see, it's a lot of torque to get that up. The crank was moving a bit, so. Get a bit more. And there we go, and that's talked up to 200 newton meters. Hammer out again. All it's done is put some indents in the rubber handle, so I'd rather damage that than damage anything else. Getting the auxiliary shaft um, seals in down in there. I haven't done those yet. They're next on the agenda. Once we've done that, it is then on to getting the oil pump, cleaning it and fitting it on. Now the oil pump in the box of bits is Febby. Not the best, so it's not going on there. I can feel the slop in that shaft already, but I'll come with that next. Um, that won't be going on there. What I have got is another KR engine. We've got another KR engine we picked up a while ago. This is just for spares, etc. Um, so what we'll do is take this original VW oil pump out of that, strip it down, clean it. I'll show you how to clean that, and then we'll fit that in that engine. <laughs> 